Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe what is meant by genetic drift, genetic bottlenecks and the founder effect. You should then be able to describe how these can affect allele frequency. I'm showing you here a starling and a white-tailed eagle. Now in the UK there are several million starlings. In contrast there are only around 300 white-tailed eagles. So as you can see there's a much larger population of starlings than white-tailed eagles. Now a key idea you need to understand is that a large population of organisms will have a great deal of genetic diversity. In other words the gene pool of a large population will contain a large variety of alleles. However there is a much lower level of genetic diversity within a small population. Now a high level of genetic diversity is extremely important for the process of natural selection. Over time any population of organisms will face selection pressures. For example, climate change, predation or disease. In a large population with a diverse gene pool, some individuals may have alleles which allow them to survive. So over time, the population adapts. However, in a small population, genetic diversity is very limited. In this case, none of the individuals may have favorable alleles and it's possible that none of the individuals survive. Now several factors can limit or reduce the size of a population. These are called limiting factors. Density dependent limiting factors depend on the population size. These include communicable diseases, competition for food and other resources, predation and the spread of parasites. In contrast, density independent limiting factors have the same effect on all population sizes. These include natural disasters such as floods, seasonal changes for example in temperature, longer term climate change and human activities such as environmental destruction. Now in the last video we looked at the Hardy-Weinberg principle. The Hardy-Weinberg principle states that in a population the proportion of dominant and recessive alleles will not change from generation to generation. However this only applies if certain conditions are met and one of those conditions is that the population is large. But what if the population is small? Small populations are more likely to experience changes in allele frequency than large populations. I'm showing you here a population of organisms. The individuals shown in red possess a certain allele. Now I need to make it clear that this allele does not give the individuals any advantage or any disadvantage. As you can see, in this population, the number of individuals with the red allele is relatively large. When they reproduce, the red allele can be passed on to the next generation. So the frequency of the red allele should stay relatively constant over time. Here's a much smaller population. Two of these individuals have the red allele. I've labeled those two individuals A and B. Now in a small population, the allele frequency can change dramatically due to random effects. Imagine that individual A dies before reproducing their red allele is not passed on to the next generation. Individual B does reproduce, producing one offspring. However, as a result of meiosis, the gamete from individual B did not possess the red allele. So in this case, individual B does not pass the red allele to their offspring. So as a result of these random events, the red allele is lost from the population. We could also see the same effect if an individual was infertile and could not reproduce. Now we can see a similar effect with a new allele. Imagine that a mutation forms a new allele in a member of the population. I'm showing this in orange. And remember that this new allele does not provide any advantage or disadvantage to the individual. Again, random effects could cause this allele to increase in frequency. For example, Imagine that the individual with the allele reproduces, leading to three offspring. And imagine that all three of these offspring possess the new allele. In a short period of time, this new allele has become relatively common within the small population. So in small populations, allele frequency can change dramatically due to random events. And scientists call this genetic drift. Now the effect of genetic drift is greater in small populations than in large populations. That's because in a small population, one individual represents a significant proportion of the total. However, in a large population, one individual 
only represents a small fraction of the total. So in a large population, random events are much less likely to significantly affect the frequency of any individual allele. Now there are two cases where the effects of a small population are likely to be seen. These are called a genetic bottleneck and the founder effect. A genetic bottleneck is also called a population bottleneck. In a genetic bottleneck, the population of an organism is massively reduced for at least one generation. For example, a drought could cause food sources to sharply reduce. I'm showing you here a population with a range of different genes and alleles. The vertical axis represents time, with the top of the screen further in the past. In this population, an event triggers a massive fall in the population size. And as a result, several alleles have been permanently lost from the population, and genetic diversity has been reduced. A good example of a genetic bottleneck is seen in the northern elephant seal. These were extensively hunted until the end of the 1800s. At that point, the population had fallen to around 20 to 40 individuals. Since then, the population has recovered to around 200,000 individuals. However, the level of genetic diversity is extremely low. That's because the entire population is descended from a very small number of individuals, and it will take thousands of years for genetic diversity to increase due to new mutations. Another situation where genetic diversity decreases is in the founder effect. Imagine a large population of organisms with a diverse gene pool. For example, this diagram represents the genes and alleles in a population of beetles. In the founder effect, a small group of this population becomes isolated in a different location. In this case, imagine that a small number of beetles are transferred to the island shown in the picture. This could happen, for example, if the beetles were on a tree trunk which gets washed out to sea and floats to the island. The beetles now colonize the island, forming a new population. As you can see, this population is small and has a very limited gene pool. The population on the island will increase over time. However, the gene pool of the population will be a small subset of the gene pool on the mainland. Now, another factor to consider is rare alleles. Imagine that there is an allele which is rare on the mainland. One of the beetles that colonized the island could possess this allele. The gene pool on the island has a low genetic diversity. So on the island, this allele is no longer rare and actually has a relatively high allele frequency. Now, what if an allele is beneficial to an organism's survival? Well, a beneficial allele can play a significant role in natural selection. And as we've seen, in a small population, the frequency of an allele can become high. So in a small population, a beneficial allele can have a greater effect on natural selection than in a larger population. And in the next video, we'll start looking at natural selection.